Hey, I'm Jonathan, and I live in London, England. Hey, I'm Jeff, and I live in Perth, Australia. Together, we are Echo and Sidetrack. We produce music that sounds like this. And this. And even this. This podcast is about music, creativity, and everything in between the giant space that separates us. Welcome to A Band Apart with Echo and Sidetrack. Today's episode of A Band Apart with Echo and Sidetrack is brought to you by Short Order Burger Co. Use the code word THE CHANGE to get 10% off at checkout at either the Hay Street store or the Fremantle store. Yet again, that is the code word THE CHANGE to get 10% off. Go get yourself a burger, yo. Today's episode is also brought to you by our brand new Spotify playlist, Echo and Sidetrack Handpicked. If you don't already, you should go and give it a like and a follow. It's a combination of songs that we're digging at the moment and putting in sets, plus music from other genres that is also making us groove and inspiring us. So go give it a like, give it a follow. We'll update it every two weeks. And it just gives you a bit more of an insight into how Jeff and I are thinking and what, what we're digging at the moment. Enjoy today's podcast. See ya. You always start the podcast, so I'm going to start this podcast. Was that the start of the podcast? I'm pretty sure it was the start of the podcast, yeah. Hey, buddy, how are you? I'm good, buddy. How are you? You got vaccinated yesterday. I did get vaccinated yesterday. I had my second one. How are you feeling today? Um, a uh, little, my arm's a little bit sore. Other than that, I think I'm okay. Like, got slight, like, kind of like, maybe there's something in the back of my throat, as though I'm like two days away from getting sick. Yep. Um, but otherwise, nah, I feel all right. Maybe brain foggy. Like last night as I was at dinner with my girlfriend, I was like definitely like struggling to pull things together a bit, like in my head. Like it's like the pieces were there and then they'd nearly come together and they'd just fall apart in conversation or like, you know, trying to make a point. And I'm sure you'll probably hear that in today's podcast. Mm. Um but yeah, now double vaxxed, feeling positive. Stoked I took my book to the vaccine place because it took a little bit longer than last time. It looks like more people are getting vaccinated. Yep. Yeah, I feel positively I, about it. I've still got my bruise on my arm. Bruised? Yeah. Whoa. So you've got a bruise from your second second jab of vaccine. Whoa, she went quite high up on the uh, on the arm as well. Yeah. Um, I, I want to kind of do... A little bit of research. I want to watch a short three or four minute, this is what I mean by research. I want to watch a three or four minute video about how a vaccine works because it's pretty wild that they can just be like, stick it in your arm, kind of, it's anywhere, like intermuscular, like stick it in the muscle and then it just goes and just dissipates throughout your whole body and that's some sort of protecting agent it's like spraying a car with some sort of like it's it feels like spraying the bonnet of your car with some sort of like protecting paint it's like yep the whole car's protected and you're like yeah. really is that how it works well i think th- this these forms of vaccines are different because they deal with mrna rather than before it's just like we're going to give you a small bit of the virus and your body's going to understand going to fight it, your immune system is going to come up. And so the next time the virus comes into your body, it's going to go, oh, it's that thing. This is how we fought it last Yeah, time. yeah. But I think this this one's different. I think both the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca use different technology. So it yeah. does something. I'd like to read a like little to, bit, yeah, a little like bit more. more so I can, one, not speak out of school, but also just a little bit of an understanding about what happened. But, yeah, it's good um, to know. It's, it's good to know. But as as uh, one of Holly's friends pointed out on Instagram, she's a nurse. Shouts to Sarah. Um, she posted, no one, no one questions the Colonel's 11 herbs and spices. I saw this as well. And people are fucking going nuts. Like, what's in the vaccine? Yeah. What's in this? Like, shut the yeah. fuck up and let's protect everyone. This is what's required. It's... <laughs> Not to start on a vax tip but that's i just found that funny who knew that vaccines would have been i mean they've been a divisive topic for a while you know that i can't remember the comedian who wrote a book that said the vaccine gave her child autism i don't think it was a comedian it was was jenny mccarthy yeah i'm pretty sure she's a comedian she's a she's a playmate she's a playboy playmate and an actress but 
Christina um, Pazinski had a bit about it and she goes, do you realize anti-vaxxing culture grew from Jenny McCarthy? Because she, this one, uh, Jenny McCarthy read a study, um, the one that says, talks about autism and vaccines. She went on all these um, morning talk shows and talked about it. So a bunch of, it, she really pushed the narrative out there. And then that study was in some ways redacted and pr- disproven. Really? But then everyone has this false information. But it was never- It was never redacted on fucking Oprah and just, everything else like that. So now people have walking around with misinformation. If you want to hear a really good podcast about vaccines, um, Joe Rogan did one with an immuno- immunologist- Immunologist? And, and a vaccine expert who has a daughter who is autistic. Okay. So talk about a guy- who's like bang in the middle of the Venn diagram and he yeah. talks all about this subject. Amazing. And um, it's really interesting. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, but if you look up Joe Rogan vaccine expert, I'm sure it'll come up. And it's not that it, it knocks everyone's misconceptions in the dirt. It's, it's, it's just, just more a, information. It's more information and it's a really interesting topic. I think more inf- the more information and the more informed we are is the most important thing. Even if that means, you know, Watching or listening to some things or people that are, are wrong. Yeah, you have to have like you a, need, a variety of information. You cause... need the variety of information. The problem comes when you only have one source of information. And that's the same with- Or the echo chamber effect where you yeah. only seek out the information that. that you believe. Yeah, exactly. And even, you know, it happens on both positive and negative. You know, you, I definitely make an effort to- listen to more people than people I hear on Rogan's podcast. Oh, yeah. I'll look at like a news article about something they talk about or, you know, kind of go to multiple sources rather than just being like, that's my guy. I only listen to him. Because anytime you get into that one source mind, um, mind frame, you're instantly taking on that person's point of view on everything. That's the danger of some YouTube channels that people just prescribe to so hard. And they're like, he's my guy. Well, Even it's like a, with Fox News or- a, And it's a dangerous thing with Rogan well, as well because you can yeah. believe some stuff. I don't know. I've recommended Rogan podcast to some people and they're like, oh, I don't know about that guy. And I'm like, don't- they, As far as I'm concerned, the guy's pretty transparent at times. Sometimes he's less so, but it's the fact he's having a three-hour conversation with this other interesting person yeah. that I'm- I'm interested in. Yeah, exactly. I li- man, I listen to a lot of podcasts where I don't exactly like the people. It's the information. It's the information. It's the topic of discussion that's fascinating to me. Um, I saw something the other day that kind of talks, uh, mentions this information knowledge thing. It's um called the Dunning Kruger effect. Mm. What a great name. Uh, I'm sure it's after Mr. Dunning and Mrs. Kruger, um, or whoever. But it's a uh, basically it's a a small graph that has confidence on the vertical scale. So it's like greater confidence is higher and then knowledge in the field is on the horizontal scale. And it's when your confidence and knowledge is very low, that's right at the start. And then it spikes up really sharply, really quickly to the, I know everything. And then it starts dropping as you get more knowledge in the field it goes along to the, whoa, there's more to this than I thought. And then it drops some more. And then it goes, I'm never going to understand all of this. As your knowledge in the field grows, your confidence diminishes. Then it hits a point where you go, well, it's starting to make sense. And then you get to the point at the end where it's, trust me, it's complicated kind of thing. Yeah, It's where your knowledge is the most and your confidence is the highest, but it's not as high as it was at the start when you said, I know everything. And I reckon that's, where the I know everything part is probably where everyone sits or a lot of people sit in terms of COVID, COVID vaccines. If so many things. People never go crazy. beyond the first fucking page of Google. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm we're both guilty of it. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. And then you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. Fuck. I, I mistalked. I, yeah. Spoke? Misspoke. Misspoke. Yeah, I mean, it's so difficult though, like, you, that's such a bad sentence. 
I've been doing this. I've been doing some freelance editing, and I've been listening to people conduct some interviews, and they've all been between seventeen and thirty. Yep. And how many times? Sorry, this this isn't necessarily off topic. How, it's so interesting to see every time they start a sentence, they always start with, I think I like, and then say the sentence. Like, or they end the sentence with, and that's just what I think, or, and I like, think that's what I like. And I've been doing subtitles for these. And when you're writing- You've had to re- listen over and over listen and, then, over and also and, write down. Yeah, and like- yep. Um, and edit them. And when you write down what people say and have to apply punctuation and other grammar, you realize how little the average person, and us included, I I think we're not terrible speakers, but I don't think we're great speakers, how the average person talks so poorly. And conveys next to nothing. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. And it's you know it's just making me you know, we talk every week and I'm I'm really trying to cut out some words and make succinct sentences. Also, start not starting sentences with and mm, that's because I believe that you shouldn't start a sentence with and because you never have a capital and an and is an additive to a sentence. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I'm not sure what the correct term of the, is, but it's basically a furthermore point like yeah. and we go on to say it's so difficult to speak succinctly and to make a point like a classic thing you hear in interviews or podcasts or something other times you're hearing uh things that are probably get edited but the classic thing is you go to make the point and then you're not sure you made the point well enough. So then you scramble to make the point again in different words when you really should have just stopped. It's like, I have eaten a delicious breakfast. I had bacon and eggs and fruit, but the fruit was off. So it didn't taste great. But the bacon and eggs were good. It just was the fruit that was kind of weird. I'm like, you said everything you needed to say in that sentence. You didn't need to add this thing. In fact, it made your sentence less meaningful yeah and less impactful yeah it's just another word for meaningful exactly synonyms what a concept did we talk about arguing on the internet on facebook last week i don't think so a re a drum and bass gig this weekend was cancelled in perth the prototypes and cameron crooked were flying from new zealand to perth and there was a covid case in auckland so Auckland went into a shutdown, which means the change, the um, danger level of New Zealand, according to Western Australia. So mid-air, they would have had they they found out they would they're going to have to quarantine for fourteen days when they arrive in Perth. So the show was cancelled because the show was this weekend. I didn't know the show got cancelled. Yeah, the show got cancelled. Whoa! Breaking live news, to Jeff today. And I saw people be like, "Fuck, that's really sad." I, you know, thinking of Inhibit and everyone that's worked to put the show together. And Origin, yeah. And Origin and, uh, and thinking about the guys too. You know, it's not really great to find out you might have to quarantine for another 14 days. And then there were people saying, talking about COVID and like not even a case and we're, and we're already feeling the, you know, one, one COVID case and they go into lockdown over there. Like, what is this? Is this the way forward? like commenting about it and then there's people that write back to that comment and they're like keep your opinions to yourself yeah shut up maybe those two people have had some sort of beef in the past or like they've all it it seemed like an interaction that had happened before sometime in the last year Mm. and maybe they were a bit fed up like that person's made some Some wild comments claims before and, and it was frustrating but I was still astounded at like how damaging something happens over here that causes these two people to have a negative interaction. Mm. Negativity brings on more negativity. Absolutely. There was a lot of, po- I really liked how much positive, there were people that were like, fuck, this sucks, but it has to happen. 
and like understanding. But it's 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 yeah, I was just a bit sad to see the see the negative interaction that comes from Have you seen the internet? Yeah, it is just the internet. <laughs> I mean I don't I, man, really I spend too much I, time on Facebook. I feel I so much lighter was, not spending any time on Facebook. I think it's shocking when you jump you, I, you go back I'm, and see it and you're like, Whoa. I'm I'm shocked and I, I'll admit as well I don't I get my news basically off Twitter where I like look at um I don't follow any news companies. I like uh see people who will share news or something or like go on the search thing and see what's a trending topic. Um and even then I don't spend much time on there. So I don't I'm literally not exposed to much stuff. And I think sometimes it's bad because it's almost like I'm pretending things, bad things in the world aren't happening, like what's happening with the Taliban in Afghanistan or what's happening all throughout the Middle East with like um, power issues and all sorts of stuff in failed states, fires in Turkey, um, COVID in America, like all, in Israel. All, these, all these huge things I'm not aware of, but it's something I don't know if I chose to do actively or if it was just became a habit that I didn't have time and then I just lost interest. But I don't spend, I don't absorb much of that information. I can't watch TV news. I'm just like, oh, the noise, the voices, the flashing images, like the yeah. way it's presented grates on me. Yep. Um, so I do find it quite shocking to go on and see on Facebook just like heaps of noise, people yelling about things, this, sharing that, sharing that. And I'm like, that stresses me out because I don't have much exposure to it. But imagine you swam in that stream every day. Mm -hmm. Like I spent, yeah, I spend six hours a day on, on, on Facebook. It's how I get my information. It's like you just wait, you literally every morning you get up and you're like, I'm going to have my coffee and then just swim in shit and then get mad that you're swimming in shit. I've been um, really trying not to look at my phone when I wake up in the morning. Mm. And I've been sometimes successful and sometimes not successful. And the but you're thing, trying and that's the main thing. And right? I'm trying and that's the main thing. The thing that gets me is always it's a message from someone on Instagram mm -hmm. because I talk to some people basically solely on Instagram mm -hmm. and I want to contact them and say, can we switch over to another format because it's distracting. Mm. Because I finish, I type a message back and then I go, what's what's going on on Instagram? And then I'm just in scroll land. Mm. But there are people that wake up and are less disciplined than me, which is not that hard. But there's people that wake up and open the Facebook app and look to a comment thread that they got tagged they in from last night. That they got tagged, like a reply from last night from some random person in a probably a different country saying like, something that you're a fucking with. dick or something like abusive. Or, like, or maybe, or just an maybe even making a good point. Or maybe you're making a good point and a positive interaction. But like, that's not a great way to start your day. Lying in bed and looking at it, like looking at aggression. It's weird. No one... Your bed or your bedroom is supposed to be this safe space, mm. right? Your house is pr supposed to be a safe space where no one can get to you. But now you literally wake up and someone can be abusing you and you look forward to the abuse to some extent. You you bring it into your life. You will it into existence by raising the phone to your head yeah. and looking at it and being like, yeah, fuck that guy. Think, think how slowly you can start your morning. Oh. Uh doing whatever you want to do in the sanctuary of your own place, but you literally go hurtle yourself through this device into a crowded room of yelling or a, a protest or a something. Like, and you're still in your bed, you're in your comfort zone, so to speak, and you're literally being thrust into this other place and like, think how that affects you everything that's going on in your body and people wonder why they're stressed, overwhelmed, 
unhappy. It's because they're, they're literally not living their lives. They're because they're living like six lives because they're being thrust into these different situations so regularly. Like, oh, I'm at work and then I go fucking mad because my basketball team lost and now I'm on the on the forum talking about that and I'm doing this. It's like, it's not just political issues. It could, it could be anything. anything. You're interacting with a wider community that is not really your community and you often don't have face-to-face time with them. I, this morning, I woke up and for 15 minutes, just lay in bed. Mm. I opened my window so it could let some light in. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of looked around, looked up at the sky, just kind of did some thinking, just h- had the 15 minutes that I might have had on my phone previously. But instead of looking at something and ingesting something, I just lay there and just was. Yeah. I didn't close my eyes. I just, I just, I just kind of rested. I just, how lovely existed, and it was fantastic. Because often I think the phone in bed is like, I should get out of bed, but I just want, I just want ten you, minutes. Because you're addicted to the more. all the little dopamine that you're getting, like, oh, new information. Fancy I wonder colors. if anyone's replied back. Yeah. Oh, more likes. No, oh, this is great. Oh, what did that person do? Oh, you know what? This is the perfect time to research that t-shirt I want to buy. Yeah. I wonder if that plugin's for sale. Well, oh, wait, we got an email. Should I read the and that's and what you start. Bra- then your brain's doing that. Meanwhile, you're like, there's another part of your brain that's like, hey, I just, I just wanted to get up and like stretch my body a little yeah. bit. I, I was kind of stressed yesterday. And yeah, like, why are you stressing me out again, man? They're stressing me out again. Like, fuck, well, just give on. me a break, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What's something that you do for your brain? Apart from meditate, what's something you think you do for your brain that you're like, that's good for my brain? Exercise. Yeah. Probably running. Mm -hmm. I would say running is 100% for my brain. Mm. 90% for my brain. And just to kind of get de-clog. Yeah, I feel that at the gym for sure. Like sometimes I'm like at the gym and it's not great, but I'm there like the other day I pulled up and I was like, I'm tired, but I'm here. And I was like, got out of the car, scanned in, like walk through everything. I'm like, I'm here. I'm like, look around. I can't see the thing I want to use. Fuck it. I'm just going to get on the assault bike. Fuck, like I can just do it automatically. It's like, there's just this little thread pulling me, like just get on and you'll feel better. Yeah. And then within five minutes, you feel better. And then within 45 minutes, you feel heaps better. And even if you walk out after an hour or so or after your run and you're like, fuck, I'm still grumpy, you are points less affected by it. I think it's cardio. Yeah. Cardio is the important thing. Like like you, you feel a lot better and feel great after lifting weight, but it's about getting your heart rate high enough Mm. that you can kind of escape yeah yeah sometimes with 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 lifting weight you kind of that's why you gotta lift light weights and do more of them yeah like you do the physical exertion and then you might do a little break and you can still get caught in that whatever negative thinking that got you into the rut in the first place yeah but with running i just feel you're you're always winning you want to give up after three kilometers and then you're like just do it a bit more just do it a Mm. bit more and then you go up a big hill and you're like i got up that big hill okay well that means i can run another k at least and then Mm. you do that and then you get your second wind and then you're like okay cool i'm doing it and then you get home and you're hot and you're sweaty and you've succeeded yeah it's a it's a great win something i really enjoyed for my brain that's given me a lot of space is reading like i've in the last few months, I've prioritized reading at some moments where I might not have. Like, Can you give me an example? Um, well, particularly before bed, I'm prioritizing it. But also, I've read on a few planes that I've been on recently. Um, I've uh, taken time on a Sunday and just been like, oh, I'm just going to do this, this. And I'm like, I'm just going to read for 30 minutes. Um, we went to the park the other day and just sat in the sun and both read mm. me and Holly, mm. which was lovely. And 
when you're reading a good book, it deserves time on it. Not just, sure, if you can only read two pages because you're busy, two pages is better than no pages. But a good book, you need to give it time to pull you in and you need to get attached to the characters. And that's how it becomes real escapism. Your brain is imagining these characters on the page. And you're like, when you stop reading, you go like, whoa, where, where was I for a second? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. But you, your whole body is just kind of transported to this narrative or even nonfiction. You can just get lost in it. And it's so, it feels, one, it feels good for your brain as an escapism, but it also to comprehend and to read words makes you feel like you get a better grasp of language and communication and all that kind of thing. It feels like it's good for the brain. It's almost like your brain gets, is getting a massage to a certain extent. After the advice from a friend last weekend, I bought the Sunday Times. And I tried to do the cryptic crossword. Whoa. Have you ever done a cryptic crossword? Cryptic crosswords are beyond me. That's where the clue is is like a riddle and then you need the answer to obviously fit inside the crossword. There's like a grammatical, it's usually a two-part thing. There's like a grammatical clue. So maybe, a, I can't I barely explain it. <laughs> there's a grammatical clue. Yep. And then there's like the riddle clue that might normally be in a crossword. Hmm. That say like I always go backwards. So you would look at I always go backwards and then uh panda. So you might look at the I always go backwards. So like I always always backwards. Maybe that's the clue. Like yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. And then the panda part might just be it ends up being a type of bear or yeah, like... Or it's black and white whatever. or something like that. But my, one of Man, my friends... Fuck those... Sorry, I cut you off. One of my friends did one, does one every year for his partner. Every year? Yeah, on her birthday. He makes her one. He makes her one. These two people are... Who is this? Sam. Sam and Shannon. These two people are... are very... Mathematically... Inclined. They're inclined. very smart. They're very... Like they're both fucking lovely souls. mathematics. At uni. What a beautiful thing to do. He's also a beekeeper. <laughs> and engineer. Engineering genius. Um, but he may, And I was reading through it. His it, or the Sunday one? No, I was reading through his. And I was like, what the hell? And, but they're all personal. Yeah. It's actually beautiful. They're all personal kind of things that only they know about each other. It's lovely. But it inspired me to get. This was the first time I'd seen a cryptic crossword. I didn't really understand them before. And he was like, just go buy the Sunday Times and do it. So I bought the Sunday Times. Which is a piece of shit paper. Yeah, which is a piece of shit paper. But I really struggled. Oh, man. With the cryptic crossword. Like he said, look at the answers and then like work backwards and just get them in the mood. And I struggled because I thought that would be a good Sunday afternoon activity something good for the brain, something to massage the brain, not unlike reading. Yeah, it's a good idea. I but it was it was challenging, but it is something that I want to keep doing, as well as Sudoku. Yeah, Sudoku is something I'm... Because I actually had more success in Sudoku than I did with the cryptic crossword. I've done a few Sudokus in my time. There's like a, there's some, a bunch of free apps you can get on your phone, but it'd be good to do them in paper so you can write the numbers next to where you're working. Yeah. Man, cryptic crosswords, what I was going to say, always... To me, I get angry that I can't do them. Yeah, absolutely. And then I just think they're this they're like the visual representation of a really smug fuck wearing like a like you know, dinner jacket like, Oh, I you don't know the answers, Jeff. <laughs> you can't even get three down. And I'm like, Shut up! And like it's that it, it just boils my blood. That's like, an interesting look into your psyche. Yeah, it's like, I just think it's like, it's like literally the crosswords being like, oh, you don't have the answers. Like, you know, uh, the episode of The Simpsons when she's, what's it? The, Lisa goes- the Anagram. Lisa goes to, uh, what's the girl's name? The really smart girl. Uh, Lisa goes to her house and they- her dad says they play an anagram game where they say a uh, celebrity's name, but then they 
mix it up as a description of, of that celebrity. person. And that's hard. Alec Guinness. Yeah. Genuine class. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, and Lisa's no, it's like they, Jeremy Irons. Jeremy's iron. Yeah. Because, no. If you'd like to bounce it. <laughs> Oop, got away from you. <laughs> <laughs> but the way Lisa feels in that situation is the way... I feel yeah, when, you when I look at a crossword. cryptic crossword and I like do a, two like simple ones and I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling good about this. And then you go, what do you mean? Like diagonally related tetrahedron. And you're like, get out. <laughs> Fuck this. Shit. But I think it's not our wheelhouse. No. But man, I. It could be our wheelhouse. But really, think about it. We've ignored mathematics. I've ignored mathematics, and I think you're kind of slightly similar. I have, but I'm coming back to you in some regards. Year 12, I accepted that I was like, I can do ba- basic multiplying pretty easy and adding up and that yeah. kind of stuff, but like advanced mathematics. And I see how things so can relate. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, not beyond dividing things, but like, you know, if you've got lots of something and you're adding it to something else and you get an offset of something yeah. I, I just explained that like a an ape but I but my brain does think a little bit more theoretical about things but then when I can't do something like that or when I get can't do a simple task that you know I've got a DHL package that I need to return and I can't work out where the DHL have a place to drop it off or I've got to call a person and if I need an account and all this kind of shit I just want to make a fucking return and as soon as I start thinking about that kind of stuff, trying to do it, then I, you know, I've got to make a phone call to them and ask a question. And they, I feel really dumb because for some people, that's just the easiest thing in the world. Like, oh yeah, you just do it to this. And I'm like, for me, that is something I procrastinate the shit out of and I just don't want to do because I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? I don't have a an ID number to sign up. Like, do I have to start a business account to get someone to pick it up? But what that's is going on? Do you... Wow, thinking, I sound really frustrated this morning. Thinking about this yesterday, do you like asking questions? Has something happened in your life that made you feel like you weren't comfortable asking mm, a question or that you were made to feel stupid for asking a question? Yeah, definitely in high school I was made to feel stupid asking questions. Because I used to ask questions a lot and people used to give me shit for it and teachers have even said to me like, I remember one teacher was like, you, because I would joke and fuck around, Mm -hmm. he was like, are you, like, you're trying to, you're doing a bit, basically. Like, you're you're making fun of this by asking, I'm like, I'm being 100% serious. I'm I'm literally asking questions. He's like, don't ask any more questions. I've gotten over that and just ask questions. If I don't understand something, I'm just asking it, even if it sounds dumb. Yeah. Because that's how you learn yeah. and then someone can ask you that question and then you can go, I asked this question the other week. Mm. And it's made me realize that not everyone knows how to do everything that you think they know how to do. Yeah. I think I've, I think that's a really good point, actually. I think I have been a bit like, what's the word? I've been scared into asking questions. And also, I've provided scared out of us scared out of asking questions, and I think I've provided answers to some people, so that I think I should have some knowledge on certain things. But yeah, I think I had a similar thing in high school, where I would ask a question when it seemed like everyone else knew what was going on. He's like, "And now just do exercises on page thing," and I'm like, "I got one more question. If it, if it." If the ball falls off the table and and bounces, do we have to work out the amount it bounces and how much energy it loses at the bottom? Yeah, but that's not important at the moment. I'm like, okay, cool. And if it, all right, and is I understand gravity is the same standard the whole way through, but like, can you just explain the height thing again? If you don't understand it, ask someone next to you yeah. or something. And I'm like. Yeah. I think it's just the way my brain works. I'm like too laterally thinking. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than being just like fucking linear and direct. Absolutely. And they don't want to hear a question from the lateral. They want like- But but that's why the sciences aren't for us. I'm interested in science, 
But when it comes down to the brass tacks of like solving the problem, yeah, I'm like, oh no, this this is this is a foreign language to me. Absolutely, I'm fascinated by the fact that when you light the fire, it burns at this temperature, then it dissipates, and that it turns to this the material changes state, and that's really cool. But working out how long it takes to go from white hot heat down to zero where it would be able to change state to that other thing. I have no idea. And to be honest, I don't care. But do you, do you think you, you know, it's like you're already almost judging yourself before you make the phone call to DHL being like the person on the other line is going to think I'm a fucking idiot. Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Cause I think I'm a fucking idiot. Mm. Cause I'm like, I just got sent an email. I was like, yeah, just here's a return slip. Just, just, there's the return slip. I'm like, do, do, do normal people know what to do with this? It's like when you go to a foreign country and you buy a train ticket. And I've got questions. And you look around and you see people inserting into the thing. And you're like, I insert my thing. And then you go to insert it and then someone comes over. What are you doing? No, 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 no. You, you scan the thing. You're scanning. You do not have the pass. And I'm like, and then I'm holding up the queue and I'm like, but I don't, I just, I just don't know what's going on. And then I feel like a fucking idiot. Why, why do you think your response is a stress response mm. opposed to a, I'm just, I'm foreign. I'm just working at and smiling. Cause you could, you, let's use the example of a foreign ticket. You could just get it and then be like, I got no idea what I'm doing and laugh. And like, I have at, I have at times, but yeah, you're right. I do go to a stress response. But it's like a, you can't just be a, I've got no- Because I think I've I'm doing no something wrong. I, I genuinely okay. think I'm doing something wrong. And I'm like, I'm an idiot because that's what my internal monologue is when I do do something wrong. Mm. You fucked it up. You don't know how to do this. You should know how to do this. Why don't you know how to do this? You that's, should have paid more attention. It's funny because there's so much- Again, we got to remind ourselves that we have so many skills that other people don't have. And maybe you could argue that maybe we've focused on less practical skills, but even then, I don't, I, I think it's much more important to be able to hold a conversation or make someone laugh or, or think, creatively think creatively than be able to send creative. a DHL package. I agree completely, There's, but it's still, and that's probably why I don't, I ignore those things and it's fine and I don't put importance on them. But when I am thrust somewhere into, into that, situation. that situation, I'm like, what the fuck? Does everyone know how to do this? It'd be interesting. Am I uh, literally, am I- The dumbest person Am I the, the dumbest person in the world? Yeah, I know that. Because I, do, because I had to ask three times for the instructions where there's three clear steps. And then I look at the steps and I'm like, I'm not even reading step one right. That's why I'm getting the wrong number. Why am I not reading? Am I so unfocused? What is wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. You're just unfocused. <laughs> That's the thing. Mm. You're thinking about something else. There's nothing wrong with you. My priorities are elsewhere. Your priorities are elsewhere, unfortunately. Oh, I'd say unfortunately for that thing. Yeah. But fortunately for me, my priorities yeah, exactly. are Because I don't give a fuck about the deal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's Exactly. Bad... Yeah. That's... Like, I mean, I, I, I struggle with it too. And I'm trying to, in those situations, laugh. I fucked up at work the other day. It was a minor fuck up, but it was still frustrating. And it was just like misreading something. It's like, it's like I've got dyslexia or something. Mm. And I instantly was like, oh, you fucking idiot. Like, it's so easy. Come on. What the fuck? Maybe this is why. And then you, your brain does go to like... Maybe this is why fucking you can't write, you're having trouble writing that song. Yeah. And then it snowballs and it's like, well, th this is why X, Y, and Z. And you, you c connect the craziest connections in your head. And I said out loud, I was like, oh, fuck's sake, John o. And one of the other guys was like, man, don't worry. I fuck up all the time. Yeah. I, I fuck up every day. And good. you're like, oh, I, you know, we hadn't maybe really had that conversation before or like, I, f I felt like you maybe you couldn't fuck up. Mm. And then it's so reassuring. It's like, man, it's really, you've done this little thing wrong, but like we fixed it and it's so small. You definitely shouldn't start questioning your ability 
to do anything. fucking produce music because of it. I've had this. because you misread a line. Yeah, you are suddenly questioning your ability to do this much more difficult task. Like, whoa, yeah, where's the, that connect going? And that thing, made me think. Like, and the thing you're an expert in, you're yeah. questioning. I've, you know, we've both done like kind of unskilled work. Like, uh, I've been a labourer. Yeah, and this is no rip on any labourers out there. Um, but I was it wasn't stimulating enough for me, but. I still could not mix the mud the same every single time. Yep. It was like a certain amount of fucking yellow sand, a certain amount of cement, and a certain amount of lime. And that sounds like the simplest recipe in the world. And I would never get the color right. It would not be consistent. I would be thinking about other things. I would be doing things. And that but you'd it also just try wasn't to- important. And I was trying to do things at once. I'd put a big scoop in and then I'm like, oh, I need to even that big scoop out with a, med- a medium-sized scoop of this one. And then like the guys there would be like, what? This is... I remember one guy yelling from the house. It was plaster as labor. One guy, he's like, oh, we've got a cowboy on the mixer. And then I, when I walked in the next time with the wheelbarrow, I go, yee-haw. <laughs> like, because I, I was like, didn't... Res- but that's... And this is going to sound really bad, but I was like... I didn't respect them to get it right. I was like, I just said to my mate, I was like, you fucking mix, man. Fuck this shit. I don't care. Mm. This is like, I've got way more important things in my life than this but, stupid fucking but job. That's like a defense. That's like a, that's a defense mechanism. That's, a defense that's like, mechanism. I don't want to do it anymore. Because what, what it is, is you're having trouble doing something correctly. Yeah. You're probably having trouble to do that thing correctly because you do want to like do it creatively. We've talked about it before, like adding. Adding some sort of creativity into the mundane task. Yeah. But instead of doing that, you try to do that and then fuck it up. And then so you then just go, oh, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. I Fuck all this. I hate what you guys do. I'm better than this. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely what I was kind of thinking. Yeah. It's a, it's a frustrating and um, stressful thing to think. And I definitely think I've been thinking some of those things recently. Whether with music or just things outside of music, I'm like, you're an idiot, Jeff. You can't even do this thing. What this is should be the simplest thing in the world. Or like, people do this every day, and you can't get it right now. And like, yeah, I get mad. It's yeah, getting mad also. Doesn't like, you want a surefire way not to be able to do something? Yeah, get mad about it. Yeah, the like, there's no Homer, way Homer gonna... Simpson building the um the doghouse. Yeah, situation. absolutely. It's so I have built a doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> does it fall apart? No, I think he beats. I think he beats it into <laughs> submission to some it to Smith some right. way. It's man, it's true. Like, there's you're not, you know, you're not. No one did anything good out of anger apart from probably war. Like yeah. if someone killed all your friends, there's a scene in Legends of the Fall where Brad Pitt's brother, spoiler alert, is killed. So Brad Pitt goes on a fucking mad rampage and like collects the scalps of all these Nazis. Nazis? Oh, World War One. Yeah, German. Oh, not Nazis, just Germans. That was probably a benefit from anger. He probably functioned quite well, but not. You're not going to make a better song because you're angry. You're not going to get through a lit- to-do list better because you're angry. You're not going to be able to deal with some bureaucratic DHL bullshit and that you're not is complicated. Love more because you're angry. No. You're not going to be able to things. you know back to the start talking about the transfer of energy. You're not going to be able to put out positive energy if you're angry. No. So you can't be grateful and angry at the same time. No. You can't. It's a stupid task. And it's funny so many people put more effort into trying to be to trying to do that than actually just letting go of everything and just putting out grateful energy or positive energy. Mm. It's so much effort to be angry. It's a lot of effort to be angry. Think of a car driving somewhere. It's like fucking constantly revving your car or like getting up to, see those people that like get up to speed everywhere they go. It's like they start- Speed up to the red light. speed up to the red light. That's what getting angry is. You speed up to the red light. And then get furious that you have to wait. And you're revving at the fucking red light. You're still going to get to the same place if you just drive a regular amount. I saw a dickhead driving here this morning. You turn left onto Wanneroo Road to get to our studio. And instead of just waiting, 
he pulled up on the grass on the left and like sped down and overtook maybe three cars. And then he was four cars in front of me by the time I turned right. Like, I'm like, bro, that's really dangerous one. Yeah. How fucking mad are you? How, How quickly do you need to get somewhere? Yeah, it's important to remind yourself as you, as even as you, we rush around the place doing things, getting things done, struggling with whatever and anything else. Be like, hey, just take a moment, take a breath. You're here now doing the things. You are a success. Things are going well. The fact you can't mail this DHL package is not your life's work. No, it's not. It's not your life's work. It's not what you'll be judged on either. It's your... <laughs> Jeff wrote a lot of good music. He was in a successful production duo. He had a successful family. He had a, <laughs> he had a wonderfully successful career. And the sh- black mark on his <laughs> fucking life is that he couldn't return a DHL in 2021. <laughs> in the eulogy. <laughs> at my- <laughs> a guy from DHL's there is like... He was... I've never dealt with such a bad return. <laughs> it got bounced around the <laughs> the office so much. Um, I heard on, on another podcast that... Um, and I'm in no means con- comparing either of us to Albert Einstein, before I say this. I believe it's Einstein who was severely dysfunctional in like family matters. He had heaps of mistresses and stuff. Yeah, like, and in his other life. Like, I think he even had a kid in Germany that he- He left behind. he left behind. I can't, I can't have a family. It'll get in the way of science. It'll get in the way of science. And, and I think even when he was married, I think he remarried in the States and like, she did all the, the banking and she was like the classic- housewife of the early 1900s like she organized everything so like outside of this really specific field of quantum physics he was an absolute fuck up it's what it sounded like to me Mm. and if i'm remembering right i believe this is correct but the most important thing is even the smartest person one of the smartest people ever isn't good at everything they're fucking really good at one thing mm. and they can be a fuck up at other things. And they apply their, they realize where their bandwidth is best applied exactly. and they do it. They just admit it. You're like, cool, I don't care about like, this. We, 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 we're really good at a lot of things. We're good at a lot of things. We, t- we also pick things up pretty easily. Yeah, we can like naturally do stuff. Mm. And because of that, we might have like 15 skills that we're okay at, but we want to be the, we want to still be like the best in that, that skill, that Mm. area or this area, instead of just being like, I'm never going to be, it's okay that I'm not the best golf player. It's okay that I lose golf every year when I play with my friends. Yeah. I don't care because I do a good shot and it's like fun. I don't need to be the best. I think I think a good thing to say is rather than I don't care. Yeah, it's like I don't care is not a good. I let go of my expectation that I need to be the best. Yeah, and yeah. am okay with just completing the task. And you because you know that your bandwidth and your skills lie elsewhere, and you don't have to compare them to anyone else. No. Maybe when I call out DHL, I'll. And then they're like, well, they're not going to say this, but imagine they're like, wow, this is a really simple task. You should be able to do it yourself. I'll be like, fuck you. Here's our Spotify, motherfucker. We made this music. This is me and my brother. <laughs> no, because- then, I am a clever music producer. Because then I that's, have an honest that's degree. also being like- that's, uh, How insecure am I? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's like, fuck that guy that works at DHL. You don't, Might who, be a woman. Or the girl. Like, who cares? Who cares what they think of you? Just- just be like, I don't understand this. Can you please explain? It's going to be a three-minute job. And guess what, Johnny? I'm going to get on with it right now. Fantastic. This podcast has been brought to you by DHL, bringing the world together closer. Uh, if you can't find the place to drop off your parcel, 
Call Jeff and he'll find <laughs> he'll he'll know it by the end of this one. Throw it in the Australia Post and let someone else work it out. <laughs> uh, not my problem. Uh, thanks very much for listening, Jonathan. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thanks, buddy. I've enjoyed this conversation. So have I. I love you. Thank you for um, pointing out some of the thing about questions. This week, I'm going to try and ask more questions. Ask more questions. And be okay with not knowing. Oh, my God. What the fuck is that? <laughs> See you, everyone. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on your podcast app and keep up to date with all new episodes. They're going to be coming out once a week. We are Echo and Sidetrack on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, on Twitter, we are Echo Sidetrack. Go listen to our music on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, or wherever your ears consume happiness. Lots of love, people. Bye.